Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Um, well, uh, we we're more le- we're going to get back on schedule. Yes, so more or less. no more softball unless there's like a tournament or something, but those are always on the weekends. So, yeah, we should be back on schedule. So we'll do a Monday one today, and then, yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back to normal. That'll be good. It'll be nice to be back to normal. Um, so, uh, yeah. your ice is, yeah, your ice is already <laughs> I had, gone. I had a little tiny, tiny bit of ice. So I got these new whiskey glasses from um, my brother and sister-in-law for my birthday. And you can't use them because you can't use them with ice. Oh, is that the reason? Yep. Yep. Well, it wouldn't have done any good tonight because you had no ice in the fridge. I had a a tiny little bit. (laughs) It was a tiny little bit. But you never keep ice in the fridge. Oh, yeah. Well, in the freezer then. (laughs) In the the unit that keeps the ice cold. (laughs) There was no ice. (laughs) Well, so. sorry, it, I, I don't use it. Yeah. Uh, no. Every once in a while, though, I'll um, I'll go to make a cocktail and I'll be like, oh, damn, I don't have any ice. Yeah. <laughs> Can't make a cocktail tonight. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, when you have some ice, man. Yeah. So. Um, but I filled the trays. You saw me do it. Uh, yeah. I'll Next have, time you're here, there will almost there'll certainly be, be ice because I don't use it. <laughs> yeah. And I will use most of what you have, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably the reason you don't have any in the first place. Yeah, it's like I only make ice for you. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. So why can't you use ice in those glasses? I, it just said to in the care instructions. Uh-huh. Um, it, like something about how they're designed. They said uh, they they recommended that you didn't use ice and to absolutely not use uh, the whiskey rocks or cocktail rocks. Oh, the cocktail know. rocks. Yeah. Okay. So, and I said fine uh, because I drink my whiskey neat anyway. Yeah, well, there you go. So those glasses are perfect for you. Yep, yep. The second time I've used them, I like them so far. I'm not quite sure what's different about it. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of focuses the like everything. Know. Like it's got a you know it's got a small opening, and yeah. so it just like kind of focuses the um, it on the Aroma. nose and yeah, yeah. exactly so. It's cool. They anyway, look neat. Um, they're kind of like the uh, the Glen, what are they called? Glen Karen glasses yeah. that I use from time to time that look like uh, tiny little wine glasses or brandy snifters. Brandy, the yeah, snifters, yeah. But they're they're like about the same height but a lot thinner. Yeah, anyway, I like those too, but I don't use them very often anymore. Yeah, they're you have to go to a special effort to clean them. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't just throw them in the dishwasher, so. These things become a factor over time. Yeah, yeah. The lazier you get, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, why don't you start us off? You sent me this. Yeah, I, well, I sent you this article. I don't know. Just figured it would be something interesting to talk about. But And it's been kind of difficult finding information on this. So in Texas, um, I guess there's this family. The, the They're divorced. Mm-hmm. And the father... When the when the when the son stays with the father, he's a boy and everything's normal. But mm-hmm. when he stays with the mom, he goes by a different name and is a girl. Yeah, it's like Luna or Luna. something. Luna, it is Luna. Yeah, yeah. and so so yeah, they, so they went to court because the mom wants to. Want, I think how I think she's, nine. She's seven now. No, oh. but when she's nine is yeah. when they're wanting to start doing. They actually want to do hormone blockers and mm-hmm. like start transitioning this little boy into a girl yeah and of course the father is having no part of this wants not doesn't want this at all Mm -hmm. so they went to court and a jury found in favor for the mother Mm -hmm. to allow this to be done so it's it's just there's been a big stink about it like Rand paul made some comments about it that was the article i sent you was where Rand paul was talking about it yeah but um it's just it just tells you how crazy the world has gotten and I just, my personal opinion on this, I don't see how you can look at it as anything other than child abuse. Because it's, if, if you're willing to subject your children to that, I just, I don't see any way around it. I, there, to me, a child is too young to make those type of decisions. Now, if they're 18, 19 years old, and that's something they want to do, they're adults by then, and they're more than willing, more, more, more incapable of making those decisions as adults. 
but I mean they can't. Yeah. I mean it's a free free society. You can do what you want to do as an adult, mm-hmm. but as a child like that, that kid is trying. All that kid is trying to do is impress the parents. Yeah, and that's this. That's it's a it's some it's just sick. Yeah. Well, uh, apparently they're twins. Um, oh really? Yeah. yeah. It's twin boys. Um, because I heard a little bit about this before. Um, it's twin boys, and um, I, you know, like if I was just going to take a uh, just a stab at this, yeah. um, I would say one of two things. And one of them, that, like the first one was what I thought, and the second one was something that I, um, that was uh, influenced by something that my mom said to me when we were talking about it. Yeah. Um, but so my first thought is that the the mother, um, who seems to be the culprit in all this, yeah. um, that the mother is like she wanted a girl and she got two boys and so she's making one of them the girl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, as a parent, I got two girls, love to have a son, but I don't. <laughs> I'm just saying I love my girls to death, but they're girls. <laughs> yeah. It's just the hand you're dealt. What, what point are you trying to make here? I'm just saying you you got the kids you got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like to try to force something onto them is not right. Yeah. Um and so the other thing is that uh and after my mom said something to me about this, I was like, actually, this this seems like it could be just as likely. Or it could be the two things together, actually, yeah. um, where uh, that the child is just doing what he can to um, to garner as much of his mother's attention yeah. as he can. No, oh, I absolutely believe that's the case. Yeah. Um, so because children she's do that type shown of some thing. interest, or she's like really happy, you know, and and gives him more attention when he acts like a girl, dresses like a girl, whatever. Yeah. And so he's just following that line to get the most attention. Yeah. Like maybe when they were both boys, the other boy got more attention. And so he started experimenting with various ideas to try and get more attention. And this one worked. Yeah. And, um, and I would, I would imagine that that's the case. I obviously don't know. And yeah. it's been hard to find solid reporting on this, by the way, mm-hmm. like everything you find on it just seems to be slanted one direction or the other. It's hard to find real clear cut. Yeah. information well, on it but uh, and there's there's like a lot of interesting details in this though that i've that i've heard already yeah. um I, I heard an interesting interview with the father um and he was saying that uh that the boy doesn't ha- show any interest in dressing like a girl acting like a girl assuming this female persona um when he's with the father yeah um and that uh that the mother reacted very negatively when he would like drop off the boy in boy's clothes and so forth and and things like that. Um, and, uh, and when he's given, um, the mother some pushback when she was sending the boys out with the father and had dressed the other boy as a girl or whatever. And, um, and he was like, no, 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 wait a minute. Why, you know, that kind of thing. And that she would react very negatively in that, uh, yeah, yeah, when that happens, scenario yeah. as well, and she is some kind of a uh, child psychologist or a pediatrician or something like that. I think by my the understanding was that she's a pediatrician. Yeah, um, I think I read that somewhere. Um, it's I don't know, man. It it just seems insane that I can't believe a jury in Texas would find in favor. Well, it depends on what part of Texas. Yeah, I was thinking. I was like, <clears throat> it's got to be in Austin. Austin, right? Houston could be Houston. Yeah. yeah. Um. um more likely Austin because the the liberals in Houston are different kind of liberals for the most part I think than the liberals in Austin. Yeah. Um which is the you know like kind of elitist type I, I yeah. don't know. Um yeah. It's just it seems crazy though that that I mean I'm I just I can't I can't fathom that type of thinking to mm-hmm. do that to especially because like like you were saying, I mean, in all likelihood, this this is just a kid that's trying to impress both parents, and to to be willing to go that far to to do that, I, I just don't know. I mean, it's a couple of years away, seven now. I think I, the, what I had read was they they didn't start that stuff till they were like nine, yeah. when they were just getting ready to start puberty. Yeah. So, and then, I mean, and what they do is it's hormone blockers. They prevent. Yeah. Um, they prevent development essentially. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's, <laughs> I, like, I think it's pretty terrible. I agree. I think that the, the idea of giving hormone blockers to a nine year old is child abuse. I, yeah. I agree. I mean, I just 
can't call it anything but that. And it amazes me how far we've pushed in this direction, too. Um, as uh, as you'll recall, Owen Benjamin was essentially blackballed from Hollywood. Well, he had a pretty good career going in Hollywood before this. Yep. Um, be, not this incident, but when he got in some kind of Twitter fight with like an NPR exec yep. about their kid. Over um, this exact type thing. Exactly. And he, yep. you know, and he said that He's, he thought that... Uh, that given hormone blockers to a, a, a child, they, they was like six or something at the yeah. time. Um, he thought he said he thought that that was child abuse and he couldn't see it any other way. Yeah. And after that, he lost his manager from ten years, his uh, agent from ten years, Completely. and couldn't get any more work. He went back to uh, New York and started working as a lumberjack. Yeah, um, and well, he'd been a really successful comedian and um, he was getting some TV spots too, right? Yeah, yeah and movies. Yeah. Um, um, and now he's recovered just fine, like, thanks, thanks but, for crowdsourcing. But Yeah, I mean, he was basically <laughs> blackballed, though, from the industry mm-hmm. um, over over just stating what any sane person would, would yeah. say as facts. Yeah. I mean... Well, and he said that they piled on on Twitter, yeah. um, but not in the way that he had expected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, so they, they piled on to him. They were against yeah. what he had to say about that. No. It's, it's kind of unreal. I immediately thought of him, though, when I when this came into my feed and I was reading about it. Mm-hmm. It was like, that's immediately who I, who came to mind, was Owen Benjamin. Yeah. Well, and did you see any of their, um, oh gosh, what was it, their equality or their diversity or whatever um the oh, democrat the debate debate no mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't catch it I, I think i saw some snippets from it but i definitely didn't watch it <laughs> yeah i should have well i didn't watch it either i mean yeah. i should have pulled some stuff though that i uh i heard quite a few clips from it yeah and um but one of them was this kid that stood up that uh was a boy and he liked hockey but he was a um he was a 10-year-old or 9-year-old or 7-year-old or I don't remember. He's young anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, trans-American, he said. Yeah. Which, that's kind of a weird, that's kind of a weird term. <laughs> right. But, uh, I, I don't, I, this word you keep using, I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> anyway, <Right. laughs> um, <clears throat> and the crowd just cheered and like, yeah. you know, clapping and like they were so proud of this brave young boy who's becoming a girl. Yeah. Well. Or something like that. And it was like it was just really strange to see, and I I, I can't like this is frankly all, I hope that this is not the standard. Like this well, isn't what the majority of people in this country. It's it's absolutely not. I mean, we're in a bubble here. We're in the South, South mm-hmm. Alabama. So I mean, we are in our own bubble. I don't think that the everyday American anywhere in this country would consider that that normal or acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm all for tolerance. Yeah. I mean, I you know, grown adults can do what they want to do, but so mm-hmm. much of this is just for attention. And yeah. just like the boy at the debate, like you're talking about, it's attention. That's yeah. all it is. He's he, kind of like Owen Benjamin's thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Candy. His mom was just beaming. Oh, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Cause, and it's all for, for just attention. You get the candy. Yeah. Yeah. It's all for the candy. Well, and I, I don't doubt that there are some people that really feel this way. Uh, now, I'm going to um, say something totally that you know might get me blackballed um like we're all right we're podcasters is, yeah, we're already exactly, blackballed <laughs> exactly nobody's giving me any money anyway right. for this so what the hell yeah um that i now okay so um this is a very different thing from being gay yeah all right and i i actually do believe that this is a legitimate psychological disorder this yeah. gender dysphoria or whatever they want to call it but i this yeah. idea that you're in the wrong body i yeah. don't see how you can see it any other way yeah. than it being a psychological disorder this yeah. is this is not normal yeah. and it is it is a bad plan to try and normalize this yeah um besides the fact that they have uh, as high a suicide rates as veterans like combat veterans um, really? yeah and uh and then um, also, like a lot of this passes. Yeah, like with time. you know these kids that Which is that the reason you know, are I, trying I, to act like the other gender. Yeah. Um, they grow up or they grow older and and they assume they're like the gender that they were born in or whatever. You <laughs> yeah, know? right. Um, to me, the you know the whole gender question is really they're going to have to reword all these questionnaires everywhere yeah. um, at some point, and it's just going to say why chromosome. <laughs> yeah right because <laughs> you can't dispute that right yeah exactly so yeah. um 
I, I, I'm not sure what to do about this specifically. I certainly agree with you that the, a child shouldn't be able to do this. Um, I have no problems with adults doing this. I think that yeah. you probably should seek some counseling and so forth I, first, although I think most places require it. Well, I don't, um, and I don't think it's something that a society should encourage. No. But if, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the proper parameters of this should be put up. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if, if, you know, if you want to do it, fine, but I don't think we should have to accept that yeah. as people in society. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. There's a, a big difference between tolerance and acceptance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I being tolerant and and promoting something are very different things. Yep. Um, and I, did you see the on the same line? Did you see the uh, Spotify commercial? Uh, uh, like Spotify has been advertising that they're such a diverse workplace and that they're very oh. trans friendly. Yeah. Um, and so now Spotify as part of their. Uh, health package, I guess, that they offer their employees includes uh, feminization and masculinization, oh. uh, whatever <laughs> procedures uh, of yeah. some kind. And they had this commercial where they had these various gender non-binary people that work there talking about how you know wonderful it was and hmm. what a great No, I, haven't, I have not so seen this. Very to. interesting. Um, that, and, and my thought was really when I saw it, I was like, who are they advertising to? Yeah, right. Um, because the trans community is pretty small. Like, yeah, really, really small. small. Yeah. Um, and so, are you get? I guess you're you're advertising to the progressives that feel like they have to be on board with that's, this. Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> who they're pitching to. You know, that that they can't say anything negative about it, or they'll be ostracized by their well, progressive I, community. I think that that's so <clears throat> much of what that is is that it just feeds onto itself. That <clears throat> you know if. Even if you don't truly in your heart believe this stuff, that there's so much pressure from society that you have to at least pretend you do. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's what they're advertising to is mm-hmm. the people that know they have to pretend to be part of this when in their in their real mind they're like, dude, this is so stupid. Yeah. But <laughs> like at the very least they're saying I don't get it, or this it, is weird this is, or something. There was yeah. a um there was this trans I don't even know. Uh, there was this guy that used to come up to the shop um, who had uh, uh, he'd gotten um, breast implants and uh, like you know painted his nails and and wore skirts sometimes and like grew out his hair, but he was like he was balding. He didn't shave all the time, like <laughs> including his chest, which was really so, weird. To so see, this like, is all confusing. Boobs and chest yeah. hair, you know. Um, oh man! And he moved away, and I like he was a really nice guy. Yeah, uh, or yeah. girl, or whatever. whatever. I mean, However, he, like, he identified. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he never, never, uh, never ne- specified to me. I guess. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but I, I always wanted to stop him, and I, I just never got around to it, yeah. and just, at, just be like, man, I don't get it. Yeah. Like, like can you, can you try and explain to me? Yeah. Like what it is that you're feeling, or what you're trying to do, or what what's, you know, what is the what's goal? What's the goal here? here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't know. And he was uh he he was divorced, but he had two kids and yeah. um earlier he's an older guy. Uh, yeah. anyway, like the whole thing was very strange to me. And yeah. like I said, he was super nice, and I you yeah. know I hung Nothing out with him and played him, games right? with him yeah. and what have you. But yeah, just never got it. Yeah, it's just yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Very weird. And there's nothing wrong with saying that yeah. to me. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, shouldn't be. Be. I mean, I'm not saying be disrespectful, but but it is weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, and here's the thing with the with the kids is where you have a problem. And yeah. like the like I believe in individual rights. People should be able to make their own decisions. But yeah. there's some point in there where, like the way I've heard it described, a lot of times the way I like that I've heard it described is that. Kids have their individual rights, but they're like in escrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not just don't own them yet. <laughs> yeah. So there's like somebody else that has more experience and hopefully has that person's best interest. Yeah. In mind that gets to make some decisions for them. Yeah. Or limit their decisions or yeah. whatever. They're like so their well, individual freedoms are there, but they don't have full custody of them yet. Exactly. They're still being raised. And I mean, yeah, some people end up with a bad hand when it comes to that. Like, I mean, you know, not all parents are created equal. Well, and not all kids are created equal. I mean, there's certainly, um, you know, people that would be able to, that there are certainly kids that I think are mature enough to make their own decisions much earlier than 18. 18 is like this. It's an arbitrary number. 
yeah. um, number that was chosen. And like, I've yeah. certainly known some kids that at 14 probably could have made good solid decisions, decisions most of the time but yeah. even like and, and in fact i would say that i was probably among them yeah. um i don't i think my decisions got worse as i got older for a little while yeah well, well, <laughs> but, it's kind of we got back in some valleys yeah thing, but, exactly yeah. like when i was 14 i was probably making better decisions than i was when i was like 19 yeah but well. um you know like everybody's an individual in that regard and so some people some people just mature much earlier and some people mature much later and yeah. i like i've known some people that were in their mid 30s that i really <laughs> thought should they, they be making their own decisions yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. and i know some of those people yeah. it's, it's fine you know but i mean that's... talking about some of the same people <laughs> <laughs> yeah right probably are um, but at any rate and uh so but in this case, this you're talking about doing something that's irreversible. Well, that's just it. There's no turning. There's no change. Once these decisions have been made, the the hands dealt. Like yeah. you know, they are. And I just don't. I just don't think it's the right thing. Mm-hmm. I just. I don't. Well, and I, so look at it from another perspective. If it wasn't this particular thing, that's the like this de rigueur political statement yeah. that's going on now. Um, that and so now I'm going to out my brother, right? right. So, so my brother, when he was a kid, like. Wanted to be a pirate. <laughs> yeah. Right? All right. Like, he wanted to be a pirate. Now, as it was, it was just a thing that, you, you know, you pretend, you play act, you, you know, go yeah. through. I, I don't think he that ran he around as a pirate a lot, I'm yeah, sure. Like, you know, swinging hat. sticks it's, and yeah. blah, 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 right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think if you asked him now, he, well, he might still kind of <laughs> want to be a pirate, but not in his the heart, same way. he probably still <laughs> wants to be a pirate. Yeah. But. But now that he's learned more about what the pirate life is like, I'm sure yeah. he, he would turn I, I, his back on He's not ready to like, move to the coast of Somalia or anything. Right? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But imagine if my parents had just gone all just in with that. Just embraced that. that. Yeah. yeah. And, and started you know, dressing him as a pirate to send him to school and yeah. telling him, you know, like reaffirming this idea that he was a pirate or that yeah. he could be a pirate. or that, One you know, day you're going to be that yeah. pirate. And like encourage the... the way of speaking and the way of acting and the way of dressing and so forth yeah. and and think how bizarre that would be yeah now yeah. take it another step now what if my parents at some point along the way had started saying well you know you're a pretty good pirate but to be a really good pirate what you need is a peg leg and an eye patch yeah i was gonna say we're gonna have to so, take one of my balls yeah so <laughs> let's just let's just dig out one of your eyes yeah. so you can have a good eye patch and we'll, we'll cut off one of your legs just below the knee and then you can have a peg leg and then you can be a good like a then, real pirate. then you're gonna be a legit pirate yeah. yeah you're gonna do real well on that ship like is that a good idea <laughs> right yeah exactly i don't think so and and it's the same thing to me i mean this is no different yeah i mean it's really not i mean you're, you're yeah. using, you're, you know, maiming, you're doing some kind of medical procedure to make some kind of irreversible change yeah. to a child. Yeah. That, well, and, and the statistics would suggest that, that it's not in their best interest that's in the not, long run. That, not like, gonna not be a, that's not going to be a happy life. Yeah. yeah. And it may or may not be. Of course, they, they say that, um, you know, the reason the suicides are so high is because they're so mistreated. I'm sure that that's true in some communities, but maybe it is. But like it's, the fact that it's the third rail to even talk about it in the way that we're talking about it right now, which I think is pretty respectful. Yeah, um, would tell you that that's not the case. Yeah, that that's that's not what's causing those suicide rates. Yeah, the fact that uh, eleven jurors out of twelve decided that the mother had the right to do hormone blockers on their nine-year-old or seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah, um, it shows you that like this isn't really. Yeah, it's not you know, as yeah. It's not as taboo as it should be. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. It's um, just, it's not. So, so uh, and moving from that to something similar, I think. Um, so I was listening to uh, some clips on No Agenda Show. Or I was listening to the No Agenda Show, and they played this clip, and it was from some forum or something, okay. um, and the, with uh, some of the, the Democrat presidential candidates. And uh-huh. it was like uh, a room full of black kids... And um, so Joe Biden was asked by, uh, I think she was a teenage, like this teenage black girl, um, says, uh, asked him what advice he'd give her for the next time she's pulled over by the police if she was his daughter. Yeah. And his response was, if you were my daughter, you'd be Caucasian and you wouldn't be pulled over. (laughs) Does that mean he's, he would not, he's not open to inner 
in their relationships. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's how they should have taken, that's, right? That's my, like, take on that <laughs> statement. Like, oh, well, you just, you wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, he is married to a white woman, so he's probably trying not to roll back time exactly. Well, Who knows? Anyway, just that's, saying, it sounds that's like really he's not, not the point. <laughs> it sounds like he's not open to it. I'm just saying. That's yeah. points right there. Yeah, we'll, we'll start that social media campaign when we get done with the podcast. <laughs> it sounds like a plan. I'm already deserving. Joe deserve- Biden is opposed to interracial marriages. <laughs> I'm already um, reserving <laughs> domain names. <laughs> Um, so, and then he, he went on to talk about institutional racism, et cetera. Yeah. And so like, there's a couple of things about this. First off, this statement that white girls don't get pulled over yeah. is like patently false. It's, it's a ridiculous <laughs> thing to say. Yeah. Um, and this might be one of those like uh, Trump style moments where he was making a joke and I'm taking it seriously. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know. Didn't really come off that way, no, right? No, it, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't. Although the, the crowd kind of laughed at it. Yeah. Um, but this is, a, this is a scoring points thing. And I would say on the way, I went to pick up a new phone today. Yeah. And on the way there, I saw a white girl, like yeah. a young white girl pulled over, and yeah. she had three police cars there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it must have been in Daphne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But... So white girls actually do get pulled over, and yeah. apparently they get the real severe treatment because I can't imagine a lot of situations that one little young white girl needs three, <laughs> right? three patrol cars to That's be insane. there. Um, and you know this is another one of these questions. Like you just start addressing everybody as individuals, and then yeah. <clears throat> of course the <clears throat> excuse me um, the institutional racism thing. Like you're talking about the police department. Yeah. That's that's a government entity. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, um, so what institution exactly are you talking about, Joe Biden? Because yeah. um, if you're talking about government institution, well, you've been in the government for like 50 a years. A long time. Uh, yeah. Why haven't you managed to change any of this yet? <laughs> exactly. There's still institutional racism out of the, after the 50 years that you've been working to well, try and fix these problems? If that's the case, I think our argument's the best one. Start rolling this government back. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's, you know, if, if it's really that bad at the government level, the way to fix it is to have less of the government. Yeah. I mean, that'd be yeah. my argument. Yeah, I wonder if these people recognize what they're saying when they say make these kind of comments. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there was also a clip of Bernie um, responding to a similar question. Yeah. And uh, he was saying, uh, you know, be respectful of, of what they're doing or you might get shot in the back of the head. <laughs> well, what that? <laughs> well, b- by the way, that advice applies to anybody. Yeah, because I mean, if you act a fool in front of a cop, mm-hmm. I mean, you you just can't do that. Yeah, and, and I mean, and I don't. What we can debate whether that's right or wrong, mm-hmm. whether or not you should be able to act a fool when you're in a when you've been stopped by law enforcement. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is you can't. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what color you are. I mean, your odds mm-hmm. are your odds are bad no matter what you do. I mean, if you if you start acting the fool with the cops, yeah, your life is in danger. The idea of contempt of cop doesn't only apply to minorities. No, yeah, right. exactly. Like if I start shooting my mouth off to a cop, yeah, um, I'm going to get acting trouble. Aggre- or, or acting aggressive, or even just trying to defend my rights. Yeah, well, that's true. And you can if you don't. Go, and if, I have I do have issues with this. I'm not yeah. saying that like yeah, I'm not condoning any of this it. Is right. Believe me, I'm not condoning it. Mm-hmm. But those are the facts on the ground. Yeah, I mean they just are. And if you don't believe it, just pull up YouTube and start watching interactions. And it doesn't matter if you're white or black. There's there's just on and on and on interactions mm-hmm. with people, and all they're doing is standing up for their rights to not have their property searched and, and things of that nature. Yeah. And the the way they're treated is just horrible. Do you see this video um, of this uh, special needs girl? Um, it was, gosh, it was somewhere in New England, I want to say. Um, but there's this uh, special needs girl, black girl at a high school, or might have even been a middle school or whatever. She might have been like 14 or something. I think she was. Yeah. So it could have been eighth grade even. Um, but I think it was a high school anyway. Um, so she was like waiting for her mom and, um, she's like holding the front door open, the principals and a couple of teachers and their school resource officer who was an actual police officer. Yeah. We're all there. And, um, and she's like standing there holding the door open and the principal goes over and essentially he tells her 
that she needs to decide whether <laughs> she's going to stand outside yeah. or inside, but the door needs to be closed. Yeah. So she's got to either come in and close the door or go out and close the door, but she can't just stand there with the door propped open. Yeah. And um, and she starts back talking to him and what yeah. have you, but and he's being, you know, pretty respectful about it. And then she, you know, she pushes past him and pushes the door open and goes outside. Yeah. And the police officer says, well, I'm tired of this. And he goes and he grabs her backpack and he pulls her down by the backpack. Really? Um, and then he proceeds to try and arrest this girl. And he's like telling her to put, and he's like holding her down. He's got his whole body on top of her. And she's a pretty big girl too. Yeah. Um, but he's got his whole body on top of her. <laughs> and um, and he's, you know, holding her down and twisting her, her arm around, trying to pull her arm behind her back. And mm. she's using her arm to try and prop herself up. Yeah, so um, she's not like face first in the ground. Yeah, right. And um, or side anyway. But yeah, I mean, like it was a really kind of horrific scene to watch. Yeah. And at some point, like not very far into this, yeah. um, and she's like crying and screaming, and and you know that he's hurting her, and she just lit her up, and like yeah. you know she's trying to do what he's telling her to do, but she can't, you know, let, like let go being... of me, and I can do that, you know. Yeah. And um and so the the principal or one of the teachers or whatever steps up and says, yeah, just just let her up, man. She's not a danger to anybody. Yeah, and he, it's not. She at no point in this has she been a danger to anybody. Yeah. You just didn't <clears throat> like the disrespect. Yeah, and he says that she is a she is a threat. Like yeah. so, here's this this you know thirty <laughs> something middle schooler. Yeah, thirty something cop in uh in body armor. Yeah. Who yeah. is afraid apparently of this 14-year-old special needs girl. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, I feared for my life. Yeah. The whole thing was kind of unreal to see and like she, she it's not that she's without fault in this because when well, he yeah. did finally let her up yeah. she tried to walk past him and she she didn't, you know, comply yeah. with what he was asking her and and yeah. she argued with him about, you know, what he was doing and why she was under arrest and like what has she done and she, well, but she's also crying like I just want to go to my mom yeah. I just want to go to my mom I mean well, like come on it's a freaking middle schooler man yeah. and that's guess what that's how middle schoolers are yeah. like I'm in the process of raising <laughs> my second one yeah. like I mean that's you know they're not the most intelligent beings <laughs> they're yeah. not these they're, <laughs> should not necessarily get to make their own choices yet yeah exactly yeah. I'm sorry um, but the uh, like this idea that the authority is yeah. is so much above is really a problem it is um, it absolutely is yeah like another thing and I hadn't been paying attention to this but I've been paying attention to it since um, another thing they brought up on the No Agenda show was that this uh, is, it's, it seems to be coming common yeah. for a lot of these at least at the federal level, politicians to talk about themselves and each other as leaders. Oh yeah, like in our country, these <laughs> yeah, you know, elected representatives are now our leaders. Are, yeah, now referring yeah. to themselves as leaders, and you know, and the police are kind of the same way. Like, yeah, it's not the authority that you think it is. It's not supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not no. supposed to be. Like it's to protect and serve. Yeah. Like well, remember that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah especially <laughs> yeah, that last part because that's that's forgotten. And then you look at some of the emblems, some of these police. It's not to harass yeah. and abuse. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Got like the skull and crossbones going on, and it says protect and serve below. It's like yeah, that's yeah. not exactly what's the skull for. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. The police state's a problem. It it definitely is. Yeah, and we're watching it happen right in front we of are. us too. Well, and and to think that these same the these same groups want to take our guns, mm -hmm. and we we've already got this massive police state, and we're heading further and further towards socialism. I mean, there's there's a there's a real recipe here for things to go south yeah. really quick. And just a, one more little aside here, and it's just a little nothing, but. Like there are a lot of places that the world's on fire right now. I know mm -hmm. we wanted to talk about Chile tonight. Yeah. But you've got Chile, you've got Hong Kong, you've got all of these places. There's nothing saying that can't happen here. Lebanon. Lebanon. Iraq. Me, it, it, the list goes yeah. on and on. I was watching, and I, it was just kind of a thought the other night while I was watching the news. But with everything going on with the police state and with our politics the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, and the country just being as divided as it is, mm -hmm. like we're not that far from people being in the streets like they are in these other countries. Yeah. I mean, we're really not. I mean, we're just an election or two or some weird stuff happening from that being us. Yeah. We're, we're adding tinder to the bonfire as we speak. It well, just takes that spark. It, exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. Well, and yeah, so the Chile thing is not getting really any coverage here. Which Very is little. Kind of, I, the stuff I've seen has, has been on DW and some of the foreign yeah. sources that I watch. Most of what I've seen has been on France 24. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what's happening now is that they, in Chile, they increased the cost of some public services. Yeah. Uh, and um, the protests started. Uh, in Santiago initially. Yeah. Um, but they have now these protests, and they've even drawn back these proposed changes, and the, um, the president's trying to, you know, make other offers to the people Walk about how yeah. um, we can come to an agreement about this. But, you know, some things need to be done, but I understand the concerns, and, like, yeah. we can make some other arrangements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the protest has now become about inequality. At least that's how it's being reported. I don't know yeah. that that's true. Yeah. Um, but that's that's how it's being reported, and I think that a lot of this is kind of selective, uh, you know, selective reporting. It's like the man yeah. on the street thing, where you get the guy that says what you want to hear, and, you know, <laughs> and that's the one that. you play. Yeah, but that uh, that may or may not be true. It doesn't really matter either way. Um, <coughs> so they had like a million people in the streets in Santiago on Friday, wow. uh, and and the protest turned violent. Um, they've yeah. got the police uh, pushing them back with tear gas and water cannons. Yeah. Um, like it's, it's I mean, really I saw, I saw some video of it. Like I say, it's, it's crazy. But the, the thing that keeps coming up is this idea that they're protesting about inequality. And, um, Chile is one of the wealthiest nations in South America. Might yeah. be the wealthiest nation in South America. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it also has one of the highest levels of income inequality yeah. because it is a freer market than most of it. Yeah. Um, and, like I had a, so I spent over two weeks in Santiago years and years ago, and like yeah. I had a wonderful time. Yeah. I thought it was a great city. Like uh, I, I that's really where you enjoyed had the bus it. incident, right? Yes. <laughs> oh right, I told that. Well, you told yeah. that story on the cast, um, yeah. And so, like, I had a really nice time down there. I thought it was a, it was a Santiago was a great city. I like, yeah. and Chile seemed a very normal place, and they weren't far removed from Pinochet. Yeah. Um, but and say what you want about Pinochet and. First off, I, I will point out that like the um, how much is made of the disappearances and you know political deaths and so forth that happened under Pinochet, and they did. I mean, yeah. he he was dictatorial in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and there was some brutal put down of opposition, um, especially in the early years of his presidency or whatever you want to call it. However, yeah. um, but uh, he made a lot of free market reforms. Yeah. Um, and he, he really did free up the market. And there was a lot of, of real fascism there, too. Yeah. But it, it the things that he did, that country was failing when and it had a socialist president before him. Yeah. And it was failing. And they had a coup yeah. that the U.S. was, of course, partly involved in. Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, when Pinochet took over, he made a whole lot of free market reforms, privatized a lot of these public services, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and uh, that country, the wealth that has been generated since is tremendous, especially compared to their neighbors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, regardless of how terrible he was um, in some respects, uh, he's done a great service to that country and others. Yeah. Um, and... So the whole thing about inequality, like this is a byproduct of, of a free market. And it's not yeah. the freest market, like I said. Yeah. Um, but this is a byproduct of a free well, market. And the whole idea of uh, socialism uh, being better because it, you know. It, divvies out equally. Yeah, because there's some greater equality um, is absurd. It, yeah. It's this idea, like socialism is the idea that it's better for everyone to be equally impoverished than to be unequally prosperous. Yeah. Right. Well, in, in capitalism, I mean, everybody kind of does what they want to do. So if you want to be really successful and have all of this money, you've got to go out and put in the work to do it. Yeah. And if you go out and put in the work to do it, you'll get the fruits from that labor. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be mediocre and, you know, sit down and smoke pot and watch TV all evening, mm -hmm. you're not going to rise to that level, yeah. you know. And you that's can a, do that too. And that's a choice. Yeah. That's a choice. Yeah. And that is, you know, you it's but that's the beautiful thing about capitalism is that you can you can make those decisions mm -hmm. and and you end up where you're at. So, yeah, you're not going to be equal to everybody else if you, like, go home and smoke pot and watch TV all night. Yeah. But 
you know, those are decisions you made. Well, I, I would say that the whole idea of equality is fallacious. Um, in that, like, again, this is, this is, it, it comes back to this idea of like treating people as a collective, yeah. like that we're all the same. No, yeah. people are individuals. Yeah. People are individuals right from the very beginning. Exactly. And people are not equal. Yeah. They're yeah. not. People have greater talents, skills, motivations, ambitions. Well, like, there's all these different things that are different from person to person. Exactly. And motivations and ambitions are two important ones because mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's kind of, that has a lot of the deciding factor in, in where you mm-hmm. end up. You know. Well, intelligence and talents is a big part of that too. It is too. It, um, it absolutely is. But if you've got the ambition, you can open and jump a lot of that. Yeah, that's I true. I mean, you can. Yeah. Like, and oh. that's that's something that you know some people have and some people don't, and that's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying you're not going to rise to the level of the guy that's got that. You know, if yeah. you don't have it, and if you think it's unfair, then <laughs> it, like that's yeah. just that's your problem. Exactly. Really. Um, yeah. it, it is not, in fact, unfair that the guy who worked, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week, um, you know, put himself through school while he was raising kids and uh, working two jobs and so forth and, and <laughs> becomes successful. Like, he yeah. deserves to be there. Exactly. And I, I understand that there's things that you that are out of people's control. There absolutely but, are. But winners are winners. Yeah. Like, yeah. winners win. And yep. the truth is that even somebody, like somebody with that kind of motivation, even if something terrible happens, they lose everything. Yeah. They won't be with nothing for long. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, you, you, they always find a way to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, this is the, the thing is that, uh, inequality is a byproduct of markets because different people contribute in different ways. Yeah. And some people's contributions are more valuable than others, yeah. but don't throw out the market because of that. The market is the best possible system in the, and, and in fact, it to is the most those, egalitarian system or yeah. democratic system. Democrat, de- democracy Dem- is the buzzword, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Like the, the market is the most democratic system because everybody who participates yeah. has vote. Exactly. Now they vote with dollars, so some people have mo- more votes than others. Yeah, but everybody's but once, but participating. Just, but just like we said, those and people, nobody's directing it, and exactly. that's the important part. Yeah, well, and that's that is the important part. There is there's as long no, as you keep government. There's out. no central planning in it. Mm-hmm. That it every everything the the goods are divvied out as they need to be, and in a way that central planning just isn't capable of doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you can't centrally plan that. Yeah. It's, it, it will fail every time. Yeah. Nobody has. Nobody can possibly have all the information needed yeah. to control a, an economy from some kind of central point yeah. to make all the decisions. Yeah. And, and, and exactly. It does fail every time. Yes. Um, and so, uh, and, 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 you know, speaking of markets, this is something else that I wanted to bring up. And it fits in here actually really well. So in the Amazon, they, the Catholic Church... Um, does not have enough priests. Priests in Catholicism, right? Uh, priest? Priests? I don't know. I think so. You, you're asking um, the wrong person. Like, know. I keep wanting to say minister, but that's because of what's around here. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's priest in, in yeah. Catholicism. Anyway, yeah. um, because of the lack of priests in the Amazon, they're, you know, considering breaking their rules. So Changing their rules. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I well, mean, not, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just... The the things that they're pr- proposing for this, they're not proposing elsewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize um, that. Okay. And so, but they're they're open to ordaining married men. Yeah. And they're open to ordaining women. Yeah. Um, There's something been... that they've discussed. Now, they it, it seems far more likely that if they're going to do one of these things, it's going to be ordaining married men, married not men. women. Yeah. Um, and But the report I saw on this, uh, they were saying, you know... Let's be very clear here. It's not that the Catholic Church has suddenly become progressive and, and thinks that women should have equal rights. Yeah. They just have a shortage of priests, and so they're willing to uh, ordain women so that they can fill the shortage. Yeah. And that's your market at work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it is. Um, it's In a supply and demand issue. And you know what? Over time, yeah. like if they continue to have too few priests and they start ordaining more and more women, yeah. it'll become commonplace. It will. It'll they become will. something that spreads beyond the Amazon yeah. to other places where they have shortages well, they have and then that, other places, period. They have that shortage here in this country. I mean, I've, I've yeah. read the reports on this before that, you know, I mean, there's they have a shortage of priests in this country. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's the big it's question. It's not because we keep locking them up. All the <laughs> well, it might be. Yeah. <laughs> Because because the big the fix it doesn't they talk seem of, like we do a lot of locking them up. No, actually, we need but to, but anyway. Um, 
But no, they um what the stuff I've seen is that they're talking about, you know, letting married men and that would actually kind of fix both those problems. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you know. So I mean I don't know, but but you're right. It's it's a the market will find the way. Yeah. And and it's these kind of market considerations that do lead to progress. Absolutely. Um it is these kind of market considerations that brought an end to or an end um to uh to wide ranging racial prejudice yep. here in this country. Now the government will tell you it's because they made laws, but that's not true at all. Yeah, yeah. They they actually revoked a bunch of laws. That's what they really did. <laughs> yeah. um, and the reason that the government had to have laws separating the races here in the South is because the people, <laughs> there were enough of them that wouldn't do it without a law. Yeah. Um, because the truth is like everybody's dollar is the same color, yeah. right? Oh, and yeah. at some point, you know, you got a business, you're trying to get by. Yeah. You're not turning people away. Exactly. You may not. You may not like them the same. Yeah. Doesn't matter though. You let them come in and dine in your restaurant. Yeah. You let them come stay in your hotel. And guess what? If you want them to come back, you treat them with respect. Exactly. Because I mean, the the dollar the dollar is mighty, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. And over time, it changes people's opinions. Yeah. That's true. Um, and you know, a lot of that is just familiarity. Yeah. Like, if you have a, a separation, then you can, you know, all these kinds of. Um, negative ideas and prejudices can persist but if you start interacting with those people you start to find that the like yeah. you know we're not so different yeah that everybody's an individual yeah again yeah, exactly. like there there are assholes everywhere exactly and it doesn't matter what color they are <laughs> yeah. yeah i know plenty of them for all colors <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> but no I, I heard something i wish i could give credit to where i heard it from but i don't i don't remember where i heard it but it was recently that the best way we can do away with racism in this country at this point with where we stand now mm-hmm. is to stop talking about it. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, it's honestly the truth. I mean, the, the more, the, the, the stuff you hear about and the stuff that's going on is it's all just kind of, if, if it's just made up almost, it's, you know, it makes it out to be a bigger problem than it really is. It really isn't, and and if you want to see it, it exists on this planet still. Yeah. But in this country, I mean, I think we've came as far as any country can. I mean, I really, I, I think that's probably true. I, I mean, or at least close. It, it's pretty pretty close. I mean, I would. I mean, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of examples to give, but I know that there are places on this planet that are way worse as far as the, in these terms than where we are. Yeah. So, well. Um, my mom knew some, I guess he was a teacher maybe, uh, who had lived down here and in New England, black guy, yeah. um, who'd lived down here and in New England, and uh, and he was very attuned to racism, yeah. or like he perceived it all over, yeah. all the time. Um, and uh, so she was talking to him about it and, and asked him, like, well, is it worse down here or is it worse up in, up in New England? Yeah. And he was like, well... Actually, I get treated better in the South. Oh. He's like, but it's because it's because there's this uh, tradition of uh, courtesy and so forth. Like, <laughs> you know, you can tell they don't like me, um, mm-hmm. but uh, but they, you know, they treat me politely um, down here, and, and you don't get that in the North. Uh, yeah. And so I get treated better here, but you know, I, like I can tell that they don't they don't like me. I'm like, what well, does it really matter then? Yeah, I mean the the outcome seems like it's the same. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the outcome sounds like it's better down here. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Ah. And by the way, I love it down here. I'll never leave the South, yeah. man. Well, the, and actually, I think that there's actually less racism down here than there is in a lot of the country. Um, yeah. Because the the races are are fairly integrated here. Oh, yeah. Uh, both in communities and, and elsewhere. Yeah. In the schools, in the restaurants, in the various social areas, in business and most importantly, though, in the communities, I don't know yeah. if you've uh, spent much time like driving through um, the cities in, you know, like Chicago, for example, yeah. like driving through Chicago and we're driving through all these little like clearly divided areas. ethnic areas, really? you know, yeah. so and, and it wasn't even just like races we think of it is yeah. like well here's the russian area and here you know <laughs> oh, here's really? the german area yeah. and like this but I mean, it's not like that down here at all no no it's it's i, I mean, mean um let's see i got white uh this old white couple on my left i've got a young um white guy on my right and yeah. next to him is a black family 
And across the street from them is another black family, and next to them is another white couple. And like, I mean, it's all mixed up. And that's about how it is in my neighborhood. I Mm -hmm. mean, it's the same way where I'm at. I mean, you know, it's it's a hodgepodge. I mean, and same thing. I've got some Mexicans that live up the road from me. Oh yeah, you can hear them, man. They play in the music. (laughs) They're on the other side of Lawson from here. Yeah, there's. uh, I I know. I mean. But I don't really know my neighbors, honestly, so I can't like give you a full accounting. I don't. But it is definitely all, like all mixed up. There's but not. We're all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you can go through the gambit, even in just in my neighborhood. I mm-hmm. mean, there, there's it's everybody, you know. I mean, Daphne so. High School when I went there was was thirty percent black, really? and like twelve percent uh, Hispanic. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. I mean, we're and, and again. You know, just the integration, the interaction fixes a lot of this, yep. you know, racist issues. The The idea of familiarity breeds contempt doesn't apply here. Of course, yeah. for every single one of those, you know, you also have you know, familiarity breeds contempt. Birds of a feather flock together. I, you know, I, like all these things. <laughs> Go down uh, the absence line. makes the heart grow fonder. So, like, no matter what you say, there's another old wives' tale that says the opposite. <laughs> that says the opposite. You always find one to fit your narrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's all I really had to, to talk about. I, uh, yeah. um, I mean, just to, once again, to make the case for markets though, like it is, it is the system that everybody gets to participate in, that everybody's participating that like yeah. anybody who participates yeah. gets to direct it in some way. Yeah. Um, it's this amalgamation of all these individual choices and preferences and so forth that direct the market. It's not, there's not some kind of overlord pushing it in one direction or another. Exactly. I'm a big believer in it, man. I'm and that saying. means it's not prejudice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's following the money. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess we'll close there. Um, yeah. I hope that went all right. It was fun. Didn't, yeah, didn't really talk about I actually brought this article. Uh, well, it's not this article. It's the speech that um, our old vice presidential candidate, uh, who's oh. now turned Republican <laughs> pres- Again. presidential cam- candidate, yeah. Um, oh gosh, what's it? Bill Weld? Um, so Weld. yeah, I brought I brought this speech or this article that was written by Bill Weld. And in case we wanted to talk about it today, but we can talk about this anytime. Like some of this yeah. stuff is so absurd, it's unreal. <laughs> uh, I I'm I'm ashamed that he represented the Libertarian Party. Yeah, that that. Uh, yeah. And uh, and all of you um, that I argued about this with. In the Baldwin County Libertarian Party about how I thought he was a terrible representative and and so forth. And you said, no, no, he's great. He's perfect and so forth. Like, just remember this. Like, go read this article and tell me again that he was the perfect, like, he was a good candidate for the Libertarian Party. Yep. There you go. Because if you come back after reading it and tell me that, you're just lying. (laughs) You're lying to yourself. (laughs) Um, So, uh, and I guess it's all back to the, all the other stuff. Uh, follow us on Facebook, um, subscribe on iTunes or Podbean, uh, you know, comments, like, share, like, and share, um, still have a website. I don't have any new articles out, but I, I have plans to get stuff out to a few different outlets before the end of the year. And, um, I'm just gonna have to, you know, fight my way through, <laughs> but we're getting into winter now. I didn't have to mow my lawn this weekend. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's always you know, nice. That'll, that'll help. Cause it's easier for me to write in the morning. Yeah. And um, I guess that's it. Yeah. Like, share, comments. Um, we'll be Facebook, back. ITunes. Hopefully getting on the routine. Yeah. Are we going to try and be back Thursday? Like just a few days from now? Or I mean, we can one? or we can punt it, but I mean, I'd like to get back on the Thursday routine. Yeah. Um, Thursday's really the easiest day for me to, to do this. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I like I like a nice, solid, solid routine. So. Okay. Well, uh, we may, depending on what we find in the news and if we, if there's anything that we really want to talk about, of course, we could always go back to the crazy things libertarians say. Yeah, um, we can do that. I mean, a lot of it will depend on – work's always a factor, so yeah. Thursday's my favorite day to kind of meet up, but things can always stand in the way. So Don't say that. They can, though. <laughs> they can and they, they do yeah. from time to time. So. Well, whenever it is, yeah. uh, join Ooh. us again. What? Thursday's Halloween. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to podcast on Halloween. I have children, man. Uh, we have to go trick-or-treating. Okay. So that just that just occurred to me what Thursday was. Fine. <laughs> Sorry Fine. about that. All right. So, so Thursday week. Yeah. 
I think I think that's what we do, right. and we'll get it back on routine then. Okay. Glad I thought about that. <laughs> Meh. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll some other time I'll tell why I'm not a huge fan of Halloween. Ah. Um, maybe next week after Halloween. Maybe. Maybe we'll see. Maybe you'll have some story, and that'll lead to it. Ah, sounds like a plan. I'll come up with one. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I was thinking <laughs> something might happen. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there'll be stories from our Halloween adventure. There always are. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, join us next time when we finally get this right. Um, In the meantime, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.